anyone watching this video is likely already familiar with VidCon 2017 Anita Sarkeesian's garbage human incident. Anita, without any provocation, spotted Sargon of Akkad in the audience and said, If you Google my name on YouTube, you get shitheads like this dude who are making these dumbass videos that just say the same shit over and over again. And like, I hate to give you attention because you're a garbage human. Whatever, dude. And so, I think it's, it's a conversation that needs to keep happening. Right? If you Google my name on YouTube, you get shitheads like this dude who are making these dumbass videos that just say the same shit over and over again. And like, I hate to give you attention because you're a garbage human. Whatever, dude. Um, but it's, you know, like the fact that these dudes are making endless videos that just go after every feminist over and over and over again, I think is is a part of the issue of why we have to have these conversations. We don't just get to be online. We don't just get to participate like everyone else. A video at the time of the event describes three rows of shitlords sitting in front of the stage with the goal of seeing the con artist Anita Sarkeesian in a public setting and she had no control over the scene. It may not come as a surprise that this erupted into a flurry of videos, tweets, and memes from the anti-SJWs and anti-feminist crowd. While it was expected that Sargon, his friends, and supporters consider the unprovoked incident a violation of not only the rules of VidCon, but total hypocrisy on the part of Anita, who has a long career of accusing people of harassment. Of course, the legions of the infinitely baffled SJWs tweeted about this courageous woman. And of course, Anita was the victim at VidCon. She is always the victim, a professional one too. What her fans and defenders failed to do is convince sane people that sitting quietly in a seat that you paid for is now considered an act of overt aggression. An interesting twist to this is the tweet by Thunderfoot basically calling Sargon a hypocrite for wanting Anita banned from appearing the next day at VidCon. The logic is that people like Anita and the SJW Thought Police want to block and ban people for wrong think, and that includes deplatforming speakers because they disagree with those speakers, and I would have to agree with him about this if Sargon only wanted her banned because he disagreed with her or didn't like what he thought she was going to say before she even said it, which is the M.O. of the cult of SJW. But I differ with Bigfoot because Sargon's point is Anita broke the rules of the conference, and if it had been he verbally attacking a passive member of the audience, he would have been tossed out. Sargon, in short, is not calling for Anita to be banned because of what she might say in the future, but for what she actually did in the present. I guess Sargon wouldn't have given it another thought if the person verbally abusing him from a stage was not someone who cries all the time about harassment and even went before the United Nations to whine about people saying that she sucked. That, of course, was the major fireworks for the weekend. But another equally interesting, arguably, the the more consequential happening at VidCon also involved Sargon. It was his meeting with Lacey Green. Considering her rocky past with the anti-SJW community, and still worse, the recent shitstorm Lacey has endured from the feminist SJW cult because she dared to have conversations with people who are verboten. Her former religion did not allow. I'm assuming most of you are aware of the recent red pill incident with Lacey firing off a series of videos announcing that she would engage the enemy. This sent people like Steve Shives running for his smelling salts. But there is more. There appeared on Twitter an image of Lacey Green hugging former foe Sargon of Akkad. The next day, Lacey tweeted a two-part video with a sincere sentiment about how she and Sargon had found a way to forget their past differences and of true forgiveness. Now, I know people have a lot of strong feelings about Carl. Um, people are aware of how he has treated me in the past. Um, and for me, like in the whole anti-scene, all these communities, I would say that Carl is the person that has contributed the most to my very human pain. Um, I think that, you know, mistakes were made. And last night, we finally talked about them in person. And um, I was just, it was a really powerful, um, intense, night for me because this is something that has, I've held on to, um, you know, some of the things that he said about me, the way that he's treated me, um, have been really hurtful. And last night, you know, he 
held me and apologized, told me, you know, why he was sorry, demonstrated a real understanding of the pain that he had caused me and a willingness to stop doing that kind of shit. Lacey is shown here with three antis as she calls them. What happened next was completely unexpected when we see tweeted rumors that Andy Worski was going to be meeting up with Francesca Ramsey. This was not going to be believed until we see this tweeted out. While I was following the going on at VidCon, unfortunately from afar, I was editing a video that criticized Cat Black for being entrenched and unwilling to meet with the despised enemy. The takeaway message from this past weekend at VidCon was one of obvious and blatant hypocrisy from Anita Sarkeesian and her unmerry band of hateful feminists, which was swept aside by the positive hope spearheaded by Lacey Green, who showed great courage confronting former adversaries. I point it out this way because, for many, the jury is still out regarding Lacey. Some feel that she was in the SJW cult too long to be trusted, while obviously others, including myself, want to give her a chance to show that she is on the side of reason. The Poo Poo Patrol and the Momo Squad, headed by the likes of Sarkeesian, are scowling like the child at a party, angry and resentful at the rest of the kids for having fun and wanting to be with each other. The world of the religious cult of SJW is narrowing in on them, closing them off from society while they sit in their echo chamber and say, repeat after me. Anita has even spun the event to appear as if she is the brave and noble one. Really bizarre since she was on a panel with security guards. Another child analogy. The brave kid who hides behind the safety of their mother's skirt calling the other kids names because she knows there will be no repercussions. Of course, like the mommy skirt analogy, Anita will have to come out to play again and mommy won't be there to protect her from the horrors of being criticized. Anita not content with being exposed as a total phony attempts to spin the event to make herself look like the hero and the victim. Today she blogged corrective propaganda in a desperate attempt to make herself look good. In spite of the actual video evidence of what she said at the conference, she writes, To kick off the woman online panel at VidCon last Thursday, the moderator posed the question, Why do we still have to talk about harassment of women? I replied, Because I think one of my biggest harassers is sitting in the front row. He showed up with several others together. His group took up the two front rows at the panel. Their presence was plainly not, as one of them later said in an apology video he posted to Twitter, to give us the chance we never gave them, and to hear us out, but was instead to intimidate me and put me on edge. They will no doubt plead innocent and act shocked at what they characterize as the outrageousness of such allegations. This too is part of their strategy, gaslighting, acting in a way intended to encourage me and their other targets to doubt ourselves and to wonder if all of this isn't just in our heads. But to anyone who examines their patterns of behavior with clear eyes, the intentions of their actions are undeniably apparent. This is disgusting. She has erased what we saw and heard and replaced with victimology. She neglects to mention her unprovoked shitstorm against audience members, but proceeds to psychoanalyze them with an Alex Jones level of paranoia about gaslighting and showing us that she knows what they were thinking. She goes on later in the blog to concoct a vast conspiracy against her and other women speaking at VidCon. However, despite the torrent of harassment, I recently made a conscious decision to participate more regularly in panels and conversations at public events because I wanted to engage with people who show up in good faith to listen to our ideas. But let me make something very clear. When you have a history of harassing someone for years and you show up in the front row at their panel with a camera and an entourage, that is not an act of good faith, to put it mildly. That is itself an act of harassment and intimidation. He and his companions were doing this not just to me, but to other women as well. Women like Cat Black and Francesca Ramsey. So that we were all aware at VidCon that this man who has harassed us and whose hundreds of thousands of followers have attacked us online for years is here watching us. It's a deliberate act to create an environment that feels hostile. To communicate to us that if and when we dare to show up in public to express the ideas that we express online, the harassment will follow us into the physical world as well. Nice work, Anita. Spinning reality to make it look like you were the victim. No amount of criticism from YouTubers online can justify your
your unwarranted attack on paying members of the audience. If you had real courage, you'd be face to face with these monsters and discover as others did that weekend that they don't bite. They hugged and did selfies. Anita is attempting to change the narrative, but to her followers, she doesn't have to. They immediately took her side, declaring her victim and brave hero at the same time, whereas Sargon was the aggressor for engaging in the heinous act of power reclining and patriarchal sit-splaining. She continues with more victim blaming and attempting to change reality by painting her deplorable actions into something heroic. She is the one who used the term gaslighting. How ironic. Now he and his followers are acting as if me publicly calling him a garbage human is the equivalent to what he has done to me. Here is how Anita and the panelists handled Q and A. If I could, I'd like to ask a question specifically to Anita. Is that okay? I mean, yes. I don't know if I'll answer it. You don't have to. <laughs> I'm just curious. The various things that you've said online over the past few years. Do you truly believe them? Okay, dude. Right, this guy, can we please remove him from the question line? Because the question that is not harassment. I'm asking. It's a stupid I'm question. Curious. Can we please remove this question oh, asking harassment? And look, the majority of the people here are the controls because they like to say you freak out about it. That's exactly what you guys are doing. You're I mean, even your language, like freak out about, like no. See, you're, you're, so, just, you're just mocking well, me. You're if you talk about one community, there's harassment. That's, 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 that's not to say that no other community is facing your See, you're harassing me right now. Can we please remove this question? Next question, question, answer. What a mess. Being someone that people are to look up to doesn't mean you run and hide when someone asks a hard question. Were some of them trolls? Well, yes, but welcome to the real world. No, you're right, Anita. It's not the same. Sargon criticized you in a video. You had no professionalism or self-control when you attacked him on the stage. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in to Radio Nutsville. Please hit the like or subscribe or something. Goodbye. Goodbye.